video we are going to look at the basics of installing a kitchen. This is not a full how to install a kitchen from start to finish video as the subject is vast and will be covered in several videos in this playlist. I'd like to point out that I'm not a kitchen fitter by trade but this is how I installed this kitchen. The first thing you need is a plan. You can do this yourself by taking accurate measurements of the room and working out what will fit where. It's important to mark down electrical outlets, pipes etc and also windows and doors. You will notice that the island is not as shown in the plan, that's because the customer wanted it that way. You'll notice that all measurements are in millimetres, for our cousins across the pond the measurements will probably be in inches. Most places that sell kitchens will do you a plan for free if you are buying the kitchen from them. There are also some websites that will allow you to plan a kitchen online for free. In the past I have simply drawn a plan on a piece of paper and made a list of the units required to fill the kitchen. If you are working to a tight budget it is often best to fill the kitchen with as many 1000mm wall and base units as possible as that often works out to be the cheapest option. Never try to cram too many units into one space. For example, if you have a gap that is 3000 millimeters, do not order three 1000 millimeter units as you may find that they will not fit if the walls are out of plumb. It's much better to get two 1000 units and then 800 units, then a couple of infills to take up the space. This is the plan of the kitchen. The actual kitchen units have been made by Symphony Kitchens and this is the linear matte concrete range. This is a handleless kitchen so there are no handles to install but there are special aluminium trims. How to fit all of these will be covered in other videos in this playlist. You'll notice on the plan that the units need spacing 50mm away from the walls. This is because of the handleless trim. This has been achieved by fixing a 3x2 batten to the walls. One of the walls is a stud partition wall and the other wall has been dot and dabbed. Tip 1. Always follow the plan and the instructions. This kitchen came with comprehensive instructions. When I fit a unit or a piece of trim I always consult the instructions before proceeding. I also followed the plan until we hit a snag and then the plan was changed slightly. Tip 2. Always start in a corner. I always start with my first unit in the corner. With this kitchen I had a bit of a problem as the 300mm tall unit was damaged and the customer was not happy with it. I then proceeded to fit the first unit in the other corner. You'll see that I installed a 3x2 batten to the wall. However, when I moved the second unit into position, the 300mm larder pull-out unit actually obscured the socket. So the 300mm larder unit was moved to the other corner and the 300 wall unit and 300 base unit was bought so that the socket would be usable. When you are fitting your first unit it needs to be in the correct position so in this instance it's 50mm away from both walls. Tip 3 setting the height of the base units. I always set the height of the units to the height of the plinth after the floor has been installed. For this reason you need to know what flooring is being installed unless you want the flooring to finish where the plinth is. On this job the floor was changed several times and so I had to keep adjusting the height of the units to suit. Eventually it was decided that LVT was being fitted so I measured the depth of the plinth and the LVT then cut a scrap piece of timber to the correct size plus a couple of millimetres. This means that I can use this piece of wood to ensure that all kitchen units are set to the correct height. If you don't do this you might end up cutting down all the plinths which is a lot of extra work. Most base units these days have adjustable feet so you can just rotate the feet to raise or lower the unit. Tip 4. Use a good spirit level. It's critical that all units are installed level and plumb. You should check every unit for being completely level in both planes. If you get one unit out of level it can make things really difficult down the line. Tip 5. 
cut edges. Whenever I cut a kitchen worktop or a panel, I always treat the cut edge to prevent water getting into the chipboard. If water gets spilled onto an area that is not sealed, the chipboard will soak up the water and swell like a Weetabix. For this reason, I even sealed the front edge where the handle trim is situated, as you only need a child to spill a load of water onto the worktop and it can completely ruin the units. For sealing the chipboard I normally use external wood glue and paint it on using a flux brush or similar. If I don't have a brush handy I'll use a gloved finger but the important thing is to apply something. Tip 6. If you don't know, ask. There were a couple of things during this install that I was not sure about. One of them was what to do with the waste pipe fitting stuck out of the floor. Luckily there was a joiner working on one of the other houses so I went and asked him and he advised me to cut the pipe down so that it would fit under the sink unit. Had he not been there I might have cut the back out of the unit so that it would go around the pipe. I should point out that I'm not doing any of the plumbing or electrics in this kitchen. Another thing that stumped me was the pull out loader unit. I fixed the unit to the wall but then assembled the pull out loader according to the instructions. Unfortunately I forgot the camera that day and it's an hour's drive in each direction from where I live. After assembling the loader and fitting it into the unit, it was sticking out by about 30 millimeters at the bottom. It opened and closed perfectly, but there was a large gap at the bottom. I went home, left it for a few days and was busy doing something else. On my return, the loader door was completely flush. It turns out that one of the joiners fitting the staircase named Paul simply clicked the front panel into place. I suppose it's easy when you've done it several times. Thanks to Paul and the other joiners that were happy to help out. Obviously if you don't have a friendly joiner close by you can always ask in an online forum or similar. Tip 7. Remove the doors. Some units come with doors installed and other units need the doors fitting. Doors can add a lot of extra weight to the unit so it's often a good idea to remove them until the unit is installed. The hinges in this kitchen actually have a lever on the back and you can simply press that with your finger and you can unclip the hinge and remove the door very easily from the unit. Tip 8. Fix all units together. It's a good idea to fit all units together. This can be difficult with some kitchens including this one due to the tall end panels. But all the other base and wall units can be joined together. This has many advantages, especially with wall units, as you can bridge over pipes and cables buried in walls. I have done a video on how to join the units together and we'll place that in the description. Tip 9. Moving larger units. Base units and most wall units are normally easy to move into position, as you can just lift them and move them. You do have to be careful with base units though, as you can snap the legs off if you are not careful. Tall units such as a oven and microwave housing can be difficult to move on your own, especially seeing as you need to get it in the exact right position. If you can get another person to help you should be able to manage. I was working alone so I fabricated a skate using a scrap tabletop and some glass movement balls, like the ones they use at airports for moving cargo. I then used a bike lifter to get the unit lifted from the floor and could easily maneuver it into position. Tip 10. Base unit feet. Most base units will come with four feet installed but for units that contain a fridge freezer or even an oven and microwave or a pull out larder unit I would recommend adding additional feet. If you don't have any spare feet you can simply cut some blocks of wood to suit. If you are installing the feet onto the units yourself ensure you cut a piece of wood the same height as the plinth plus the flooring and use that to adjust the feet before putting the unit in position. You then only need to make minor adjustments to the feet. Tip 11. Ensure that tall wall units are firmly fixed. This should be obvious but tall wall units present a hazard, especially if little Johnny tries to climb up the unit. If it's not firmly fixed to the wall behind it could topple over and damage little Johnny. It's absolutely critical that such units are firmly fixed to the wall. When fitting this kitchen I originally fixed the tall wall units to a single batten 
but then added another baton to be on the safe side. Finally, tip 12, check all components on delivery. When you get your kitchen delivered, ensure you check every single item is present and that it's not damaged. This is really important as some firms give you a limited time frame in which to make a claim. I once had a kitchen delivered that was cash on delivery. On checking the items, there was a wall unit missing from the order. Out of good faith, I paid the driver and he wrote the missing item on the delivery note. It quite literally took me weeks to get the missing item and resulted in me driving to the factory to pick it up. That's about it for this introduction video. I'll add other videos to this playlist as soon as I can. I hope you found this video useful and I'd like to thank you for watching the video.